there are some nice varieties out there and it's important to also see what, what happens early on so when you walk into the woods you know, okay, the mushroom season is going to begin pretty soon here. So it's good to see this too, right? So we'll carry on up this trail. I found one of my favorite eating mushrooms right up here, right on this <laughs> concrete path here. So we're going to just go see that guy. Now this is the... Uh, the it's, uh, it's a very meaty mushroom, nice nutty flavor. Um, however, these guys get attacked by bugs. Totally. Uh, Is that why it's popular? Uh, no, that's just. Uh, it's actually probably because it's been so hot and dry. It's you know dried out in spots, and then other spots were wetter, and it kept growing around the dry spots. So this is, uh, you've probably all heard of the porcini or the king bleed. Um, this is the best, uh, second best, I guess, according, like, compared to that one. Now a true bleed um, has perfectly round tubes. This is what we call the sponge or the spore hose. And all bleats have this. And a cellulose has it as well. But a true bleat, um, when it gets a little bit bigger, these tubes are perfectly round. So if you cut the stalk off and put it on a piece of paper, the print would come up with perfectly round circles. On a cellulis, it's angular tubes. So they're like kind of diamond shaped. And, and there, there's a lot of edible varieties in both families. Uh, but this one is a, a scaber bleat. And there's a whole bunch of different varieties. Uh, one of the ones I sell is called a red cap. And it's, it's the same kind, except it's got a, a bright red top rather than brown. But they're all very closely related. Birch bleat, um, this one would be closer to the birch bleat. But the scapers have these little fibers on the stalk. And when you cut it open, it doesn't stay perfectly uh, white like a king or a porcini. Uh, it will turn color, and I'll just show you. That's why we picked it, because... And this is very abundant at times, like even right here. This mushroom will pop up again next season in the exact same place. Um, and if it's a good condition for it, there'll be a whole bunch of them. And I don't know where the plant exactly goes here, but it might be in a, a ring or a line. Um, and this is the fruit of the plant. Okay, the, the, the plant is the mycelium. So it's like a little thin skin membrane traveling under the ground, and it's probably associated with these birch trees here. <laughs> Okay, so it needs these birch trees to live. So you notice it's white when I cut it open. Now watch its color. It might take a little while to dry, yeah. but it'll eventually, blue? yeah, blue and sometimes <laughs> they go pink. And usually it's faster than that, but this one's quite dry. And then eventually when you cook it, it's, it's, um, it, it ends up being grayish black. Mm -hmm. This one has no bugs. That's amazing to me. Right out in the open, it should be totally full of bugs. What do you mean by the tubes? Yeah. Tubes are these, uh, like a lot of mushrooms have gills, which are little, uh, uh, we'll see some, we'll see lots of gills when we go into the woods here, but these, these little things coming down here are hollow tubes, and they carry the spore of this mushroom. So when you cut that off and put it on paper, it'll drop the, the seed out of those tubes onto the paper, and you can get a spore print. Do you not, this not, print? Do you just put it somewhere and it, it's going to prosper? Uh, you can try that, um, but usually it's uh, if a mushroom is associated with a tree, it has to have that tree there. So if it, if it can grow there, it's probably already there. That's what I've found with mushrooms. I have some of the composting varieties and that eat uh, rotting grass or rotting sawdust or rotting manure, you can, you can plant with spore. <laughs> Um, so what if I was going to eat this one, at, which somebody should because I've already taken them down, I take the dirt off um, to check for bugs obviously and there's this is a little bit of aging here, it's drying out but that's still the entire piece of this mushroom is delicious, so very worth eating. I'll take half of one piece. There you go. It's all yours. Thanks, <coughs> Thanks Anyone else? Can you make sure that keep any? <laughs> uh, not too long. Not really. Should be cooked in the next day. What, what prompts them to drop their spores? When they get mature, that's the okay, that's the, the purpose of this. Um, so this is the fruit, mm -hmm. so it's like an apple. The apple carries the seed, and when it gets ripe, the seeds get ripe. Same thing with a mushroom. When it gets ripe, the seeds get ripe, and then when they're ripe, it just drops and they fly. <laughs> they're in the air all the time. There's one other uh, mushroom that's up by these trees. We'll take a quick look at. 
a scaber bleed is my common name, but it's a lesson in is the Latin, L-E-C-C. -C.